everybody it's Will Stewart again I uh, just wanted to uh, keep going with some of the new custom knives I got so you guys could take a look at them uh, once again this is not an in-use uh, kind of video I just wanted to give people a better idea what these knives look like and um, a little bit how they look in hand in comparison to a few other knives and tell you a few of my uh, you know favorite aspects about them. Uh, the next one up is the Brian Andrews Pterosaur this was also designed um, in part by Joe Flowers uh, one of his brain brain childs <laughs> Uh, but it's a it's a really impressive knife. I've owned uh, another knife from from Brian, his uh, first Bushcrafter model, and I think it was actually one of the early ones he ever made. But it was uh, a, it's been a long term favorite of mine. It's just another excellent Scandi knife, and Brian absolutely knows what it takes to make a comfortable handle. Um, he understands uh, you know what works and what doesn't in real life. I think, and um, this knife represents just some impressive, very very impressive fit and finish. Uh, especially at the price point that he offers these and the extremely low wait time to get them. Um, Brian is just, he's a relatively new maker, but um, that would not show at all based on his uh, fit and finish. You would not look at this knife and say there's a new maker. But um, this is his sheath. It's leather. It's treated with, um, I can't remember, surely, you know, it's a beeswax type thing. It, it's a uh, fit as about as tight as Kydex, extremely tough, um, uh, extremely rigid, but it's a great belt knife or excuse me, but great belt sheath. It uh, fits well and I uh, wouldn't hesitate to use it even in very harsh conditions. So if we can get that knife out. This is the Pterosaur. You can see his Off the Map Outfitters. Um, that's where you can go pick up his knife. That's Brian's website. Again, that's offthemapoutfitters.com. And then here is a uh, small emblem from Joe. Joe uh, is definitely not a, uh, you know, a newbie to knives or the woods. He's I uh, got a whole lot of experience, a whole lot of dirt time, as they say, um, and he's uh, another gent who knows what uh, what works and what doesn't. Um, I'm going to put this here, but I'm going to review it later just so you can see it. But this is a Skookum Bush tool. Um, Joe's reported in the past that it's one of his favorite knives and, and sees the most use until this. Um, so I'm going to try to show some of the design influence that you'll probably be able to notice and point out similarities and differences. So on Brian's knife, this is 8th inch thick, 01 steel, um, with a Scandi grind. The bevel is a little shorter uh, in width than his Bushcrafter model that I have from him, but it's no less sharp for sure. This is a, just a razor, uh, really mean on wood. <laughs> it's just a great, great carver. Got about a 4 inch blade, probably a 4 and a quarter inch handle, 4 and a half inch handle. Fits well in the hand. You see the width here, you can see the palm swell here. It's um, probably almost an inch thick maybe a little less and it's you know contoured but a little more gently a little less radically than say the fiddleback or than even his first bushcrafter model uh, this is green micarta with the blue liners I'm a sucker for the blue liners it's got the exposed tang at the butt so you can use it to maybe hammer a bit or if you're really ballsy you can use it to baton in to get your knife uh, into the wood more um, that's something that is uh, maybe not worth it for me when I could just use a wedge of wood something like that but all the same neat aspect it's a pretty high riding lanyard tube, so it doesn't get in your way. A couple pins, and uh, just a really good knife. It fits well in the hand. You can see there. My uh, one and only complaint, and this is a really minute factor for me considering how uh, quality the other aspects are for this knife, but you see the palm swell? It's actually placed right in the middle of the knife. And as maybe you saw on the Fiddleback Forge knife, which I guess I'll also place up here. Uh, the palm swell on this knife rides much further up. So if your hand, if this is centered in your hand, then your hand's very near the edge. Whereas on this one, when you center it in your hand, it's still a bit back. So I don't feel like I get as much leverage as I could. If this was moved up about a half an inch, the center of the swell, I think I'd be a lot happier. But um, still, again, overall, great knife, still very comfortable to work with, still a great slicer. Hang on, I gotta yell at my dog. Ruby. Come here. Alright, she's being bad, so I'll be right back. <laughs> okay, sorry about that. My dog is not a good dog. <laughs> um, uh, so, you know, overall, this is uh, it's still a great knife. Still very comfortable. Still fills, fills the hand well. 
Um, excellent slicer. Very slight drop point to the relative straight back of the skookum. The skookum's got a couple degrees drop starting about here, but still um, not quite as dropped as the Brian Andrews is. Uh, the blade width is uh, not too much different. The Brian Andrews maybe has like a I don't know, quarter inch or something like that uh, on the skookum. And you can see the swell is a little more defined on the Brian Andrews as well. The skookum still has the exposed butt plate for, you know, smashing jobs if that's what you need it for. And um, here's the handle contour difference. It's maybe a little more defined on the skookum as far as the contouring, but it's also thinner on the skookum, so that's something to take into account. Um, normally, uh, the circumference of the skookum might be even a little bit small for me, but um, uh, maybe it's the, the width and the profile here, but it just seems to still fit pretty well in my hands. Um, it's a tough contest if someone said you get to take either or. These are both just superb knives. Um, I, it's, it's really hard to pick out. You can definitely see the design influences that Brian and Joe decided to put into the Pterosaur. Um, and they work. They took the best and they kind of made it their own. And um, for, for good reason. So um, that's a little bit about it. I'm going to set these here again so you can get a better idea of how they look. Scook them in the Pterosaur. That's a Vic Farmer and the Ubiquitous Moore 510, just so you can get a better idea. So there we go. And I'll be back in just a bit, hopefully, to talk a little bit more about the Skookum and uh, how that feels. And uh, I'll hopefully see you all then. Take care.